Hello everyone, welcome to the Jenkins Weekly Infrastructure Team Meeting. Today we are the 20th of December, that's the last meeting of the year. Around the table we have myself, Damien Duportal, Hervé Lemeur, Mark Waite and Kevin Martins. Let's get started with an announcement. So the new weekly 2.383 has been released, changelog approved, checklist in progress. Thanks for Mark for confirming. Um, we haven't deployed it yet on our infrastructure, neither checked for the Docker image we'll do after the meeting. But that's, that should be good. I don't think the change log was huge on this one. So yeah, should be okay. So reminder, no team meeting next week. No team meeting next week. Let's see each other next year. That's the mandatory joke for the two weeks before end of year, every year. Do you have other announcements, folks? Okay. Oh, oh yes, yes. Yeah, Wait a second. Yes. There's a webinar today. Um, for webinar today to, to launch the Jenkins project in Google Summer of Code. Oh, nice one. And calling it a webinar okay. is a bit of a stretch. It's actually a Zoom meeting. So, but a webinar is as good a way to describe it as any. It will actually just be using a Zoom meeting. We're being a little bold this time and hoping that we don't get Zoom bombed. Crossing finger then. Nice one. So good luck for the webinar. That will be a lot of talented people there, I'm sure. Do you have other announcements? Um, just a note about uh, uh, the first week of January. I will be off, and I think Hervé will be as well. Yes. yes. So Steph only Stefan, Kevin, I'm not sure if you will be off this week. Mark will be there. I'll be there. Yeah, Ke and I think Kevin's Kevin. I think you're planning to be in the first week of January. Yep, I'll be here. I'm only off next week. Right. So um, there is one more announcement. The Git plugin and the Git client plugin are preparing for a, a major version change. And there's been a request by the Git plugin maintainer, me, to have people help test it. I so see the version four and version five uh, request uh, for preparing that and you know, various uh, your thread and community and yeah. Yeah. And, and I, what I'm I'm trying to do the best job I can to be sure that it's reliable, compatible, et cetera, but much better if we have more people saying, yeah, it looks okay to me too. We can start using it on Infra CI. What do you think? Uh, I'm not sure I'd use it. Well, I, I actually, I, Infra CI would be fine. I'm not sure I'm ready to go with anything like uh, ci.jenkins.io yet because we don't like to put pre-release on ci ci.jenkins.io but infra yeah uh, if, we, we, we did it numerous times for the pipeline plugins uh, announcement using incrementals oh. on ci jenkins io the goal was to reproduce issues that were only on high load or specific cases good so um, i mean well and that, that and would the, make sense the the post on community.jenkins.io includes the entries for plugins.txt for incrementals already. So all you have to do is cut and paste. So that's that's really great then. If you're willing to use it there, I can I can then watch to see if there are any surprises. So there is no problem if you do it uh, um, during the, the two uh, incoming weeks. That could, oh, if, oh. if it's announced, that could be, there is no problem if it's announced on the mailing list. And you say for the four next hours, we are going to deploy the Git plugin and then we roll back to stable. You can do a brown out, is that the wording? Yes, yes, okay, good. So so it would be a, that would be a reasonable place for me to submit the pull request to the, the plugins.txt file for infra CI. And mm -hmm. then, then I can watch it once it's merged, see, hey, how does it go, et cetera. Okay, thanks, I'll take that action. 
It's dark. I'm, I'm not yet. I don't know that it'll be today. Today's kind of busy, but. Docker, gently, weekly, plugins.txt. Okay. Okay. Uh, that's all for an announcement. So next weekly, next week, even if there is no team meeting, um, next LTS will be 11 January 2023. I'm not aware of any re security release event and yeah next major event is the devox and we have first them before and right. the webinar as we said okay anything on the calendar's announcement no okay so let's proceed um what did we do last week that is closed so, so first of all uh, mark thanks for uh, the fix and for about the java doc i confirm it it works as well on ci jenkins and on trusted where it's deployed so uh, mark pushed a fix on the java doc builder that under the case that we had with z devops uh, plugin that has been that has been released for the first time and we don't know why, but it generated an empty jar file for the Java doc. I assume everything was done manually. So the problem is that it was breaking the Java doc generation. So now there is a, a catch uh, in the code of the Java doc generator to handle uh, empty zip files. So now we are able to update again Java doc. Good news, it wasn't the latest LTS or something with the latest baseline as it was the on the previous issues. So thanks, Mark. Um, so Damien, I actually had a question about that one, if you're okay with me asking a question yes, before you go on. So one of the things that job does is it creates a 600 megabyte archive and saves the archive with an archive artifacts. I believe that means it writes it to the controller uh, and over half the total execution time of the job is spent doing the creation of that of that archive, the tar process, because it's using a, a bzip correctly to compress the thing. But is there any compelling reason for us to save that uh, artifact? I'm prone to say, leave it alone and just admit that take delete the archive step completely and admit that if somebody needs it, we'll put it back or maybe parameterize it with the default parameter being off. Putting it so, in a, an object storage could be another solution, maybe. Well, maybe. and and yeah, see if know. if you look at the next step down, the next step down is where it gets shipped off to the blob storage, where it's actually displayed. Okay. And that for me is a very reasonable thing to do. <laughs> Shipping it to blob storage is perfectly sensible, but on ci.jenkins.io, we don't want to do that because that requires credentials, right? And and correctly, it should require credentials. Exactly. I, I was thinking we could I could Netlify it or we could do something else, but it felt like spending half the time of the job creating a compressed zip file that no one reads is kind of wasteful. Any guidance there? And it's okay if you just say, no, Mark, stop worrying about trivial things. So. Is it the SH step or the archive artifact steps that takes so it's, much time? It's the tar step. It's the SH step. Okay. Uh, proposal. We have uh, re we recently worked with the steps generators that generate also a website based on the source. Mm -hmm. And uh, with Stefan and Adrien, we discussed that the archive part should be kept at least on the principal branch only on CI Jenkins IO. That will mean we would have the infra is trusted else if infra is not trusted, meaning if it's run on CI Jenkins IO or whoever who wants to build it and the, the it's not the principal and it's the principal branch, then we keep that step only on master, but not on pull request. So pull request will give you a quick feedback, but Good. having yeah. that on main branch will permit yes. to the contributor to see the resulting arti um, artifact file. What's that makes the blocks, the, what's the block uh, the archive trusted uh, blocks fair uh, step mm -hmm. uh, what is it uploading 
Oh, good point. Good if point. it's uploading the TAR archive, it's which Data as far sites. as I, as yeah. far as I know, it is okay. not right. It's okay, it's okay. relying Thanks. on on blob transfers natural ability to do to our sync style only publish things that have changed, and and blob transfers our sync style publish only what's changed means we only get updates on pages that actually got altered. But that's a good point that there is underlying there. If the deployment on production only do a kind of rsync like blob XFR is the same between two sources, then it means that we don't need to first zip with right. star bz2 and then zip it a second time to send it to the controller. We could just remove that part and change the arti archive artifact to only archive the data site. Ah, ah, right. Okay. And that that then would allow archive artifacts to do the well, but won't that then create a lot of small files in the artifact? It's a zip file. So you don't oh, have it is. to think. Okay. Okay. And so you don't so have we to list worry. artifacts and it will it will package them for us. Okay, good. Exactly. I'll work on this separately then. Thanks. Sorry for the side trip. Thank you very much for the guidance. I, no, I no like problem. that. So first first point was. It's okay if it's only on the primary branch that we do the archive. And second yes. is archive artifacts doesn't really need us to construct the, the compressed zip file first. We could let archive artifacts do all that work. Absolutely. If so I we're may, do, doing double I, work there. I think there is a good opportunity here to also switch to declarative given how simple that pipeline is. I don't see the value of scripted, mm -hmm. which okay. means you could absolutely check what we did for the step generators and you can have almost the same pipeline. Great, thank you, good good pointer. So step generator has done the transition to declarative and you've, you've applied those things already. I can use that, thanks very much. Is that okay for you, Hervé? Is it what you were asking or did I miss the... Yeah, it's a... And could be avoided on peers. Um, next subject, thanks, survey, but uh, so thanks to uh, uh, team Alex and uh, and the both of them for working on updating a lot of the Ruby dependencies used for Jenkins IO website, which includes some repositories such as ASCII Doctor Jenkins extensions required to renovate which is a kind of dependabot or update CLI alternative, uh, which does things in the between. So it's easier for them to use Renovate and they asked uh, the infra team to install it on the GitHub organization, which we did, but mm -hmm. only focused on the repositories that require Renovabot. So and now Jenkins.io uh, has also Renovate. Uh, mm -hmm. I saw a request from Gavin uh, uh, comment on one of his, his pull requests uh, explaining why he, he wanted to get uh, the latest uh, from an PKG uh, for his node module or his web component mm -hmm. for the Jenkins IO. Yep. So, yeah, uh, that's one of the pain points uh, gone with uh, Renovate, I think. Uh, to keep in mind yep. uh, for. That's a good point. So, the thing is, Dependabot is clearly the most efficient, but its scope is really narrow. In the case of Renovabot, it's able to track way more dependencies. It provides a nice pull request, way more. That's the most useful, I think, of the three. And Update CLI um, requires more maintenance, but is way more powerful. You can do things more complicated. So it depends. Most of the time, going for Renovabot will help a lot. But I'm I'm mentioning that because Mark, I saw that you did the pull request uh, today about updating Blushion Maven version on some tutorials on Jenkins IO. That will be worth checking if Renovabot or Update CLI couldn't help you on that part by opening pull request automatically when there is a new Maven version or right. Blushion version. Yeah, uh, I, 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 go ahead, Herve, excuse me. I was wondering if it's possible to have a global variable for a specific version uh, available for every document in Jenkins.io? So technically, yes. In practice, in real life, don't even think about it. 
because of the amount of tools that are implied to generate Jenkins IO. If it was pure ASCII doctor or pure Yugo, okay. that would be but easy. Even, but even having the version that's uh, in the, uh, under the header, the definition. The, the, the there has been more than 50% that tried it during the past six okay, years. Okay. Trust me. You, you, okay. That's a good thing if you find a way to do it. Maybe some of the past constraints are gone and I'm not aware of that, but it's not easy. So if you want to try it, please do. But be aware that you might end up on something like, oh my, yeah. why so much but, thing? Yeah, okay. Because it was, um, I think it was the same kind of thing you suggested. Yes. The, the, think, uh, yeah. uh, so what I'm suggesting is that it's part, it, it, most of the time it's, you have a kind of scope per page or per tutorial. Okay. S but since a ski doctor is able to have variables, if you are able to at least move the variables on top of the ASCII doctor source page, that might already yeah. be the case, I'm not sure. Then we could use Renovabot or update CLI. Update CLI, I'm sure it will be able to, using a search and replace pattern, it will work. I use it for ASCII doctor itself. Uh, I don't know for Renovabot, worth checking though. Uh, there's actually, I believe there's even a, a ticket raised in the Jenkins.io, uh, an issue raised in the Jenkins.io issue list that we need to automate more things in in that. <laughs> those three are three examples. There are five or six others. Yeah. If you have a link to this issue, if you find again, I, uh, can you copy yes. it? If I, but that that's but I just want to say uh, it's uh, not infrastructure yeah. topic. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, so, uh, I raised it. I yeah. should have not. I, I moved the scope, but yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, next topic. So the maintenance migration of repo Jenkins AI was successful past Sunday. Uh, thanks, survey for the help uh, Sunday. So we didn't have any issues, so that was perfect. Nothing to do. It looks like based on what you saw, Hervé, and what Daniel saw, that uh, it's clearly faster than before like at least twice, the, the build time when downloading artifacts are clearly better. So maybe we could, uh, we might uh, we might use way more bandwidth per month now, thanks to that. <laughs> that will be an annoying consequence, but no, it's still a, a, good, a good thing. Uh, yes, so now we are back to decrease bandwidth. Uh, we will have a, a meeting with GFrog later today, Mark. Uh, just to be sure, uh, I, I assume it, it will be to just to summarize before end of year. I don't have anything else about that. We have question points, element to underline about uh, that migration. So the next step for us will be ask Gifrog a support account and see if we have access to the portal. So they, I'm sure they will give us direction later today. Forgot username, password, account not found. As usual, someone open an issue for an account that doesn't exist and then never answer. So closed as not done, even though we ask a question. CD failure on SCM API plugin. Um, I assume RPU. Yeah, temporary error. Yeah. There was temporary. a lot of GitHub error uh, last week. Okay. Some GitHub, um, like so, the yeah. commit reference uh, missing. And, yes, yeah. that's true. Uh, so issues on GitHub that made the, uh, that require that the GSE uh, Glick in that case had to wait for five hours, but the RPU repository permission update runs, should run every three hours successfully to update a token that is only valid for four. So five hours means if you have the token of, uh, that is age of five hours, that will be refused by Artifactory. But that was fixed then. So thanks to Daniel for helping on that part. And finally, Jenkins.io components. So I assume it's Gavin. Yes. Gavin created a new repository to, or, to host the web components used on Jenkins.io, uh, published to NPM. Uh, and that's all. It wasn't for that. It was for localizing. Yes. This Jenkins component. It's not for the creation, it's for the localization to the inclusion uh, in uh, crowding. 
Look at so the neither the issue. name. Look, look at the type of the issue. I'm sorry, that makes no sense for me. Um, the issue is this type of issue, the crowding label, because it's a, a crowding to have, see, it's for the integration into crowding. It's, it has nothing to do. He created a uh, uh, blank, uh, blank issue. He didn't use any template, template, but it was for integrating in Jenkins okay. IO component into crowding. Okay. Clear. Okay, so nothing for us. It was just they were just using the DL disk. Perfect. Thanks for the explanation. Uh, work in progress now. Uh, a word about EKS. Uh, I had to recreate one of the EKS cluster yesterday and spend all my day doing that. Because uh, without further warning, AWS changed some default parameters of EKS cluster. And I suffered from that while trying to upgrade the major version of the Terraform module that broke things. Uh, that made uh, the default clusters are now private by default. So you have to explicitly change the default. That's a change on both the module and the EKS. And there were a bunch and a bunch of uh, problems. So I had to recreate it from scratch. Um, right now, everything is redeployed, it's integrated. I just did that the certificate on repo.aws.jenkins.io, the local artifact caching proxy, that's the only application on that cluster. That's why I went ahead. Uh, that application is now um, uh, working, running, but without a valid certificate. I have to check on that one. More we are trying to use AWS EKS for something else than ephemeral cluster, the more uh, we have issue and waste time. So at the moment in time, maybe it might be worth it to use a, uh, a local machine instead of that. But yeah, we'll see. Just uh, that was Hervé's suggestion at the beginning. We chose to use Kubernetes because we want the caching proxy to be the same on every cloud where we have a Kubernetes cluster. But that might be worth it having a virtual machine instead. Uh, I've opened an issue and I'm going to update the issue with all the pull requests and commits I did on changes. So it will be auditable afterwards. But I didn't have time to do it in real time yesterday. So work for today and tomorrow for me. Uh, consequence on CI Jenkins IO that was only working with Digital Ocean. So it was, uh, it had a huge build queue this morning due to that, but now it's back to normal. A new issue, so that one I keep for next iteration, yes? No, no. A new issue, I haven't looked at it, just uh, took it to, um, yes? Yes, I, I didn't have at the time to ask uh, this person if he tried to, if he, they tried to log in account. We, we have to look at it for the next iteration. Yep. Uh, don't, don't worry about resolution during the weekly making thing because that might be an issue, that might be RPU, that might be an issue on the user side. So uh, it, uh, just to mention it, that it will be moved to the next iteration. Artifact caching failed on DigitalOcean and AWS. So on AWS Thing now we... for sure. No, <laughs> it's on the free provider. It's also on Azure. I didn't take to look at it. Uh, just I've just uh, disabled uh, disabled uh, mm -hmm. the I've set the available provider uh, global settings to none. So uh, the build plugin uh, use uh, repo Jenkins CI dot uh, org uh, by default every time while uh, I look into it. Okay. A uh, proposal Hervé is to keep it ACP disabled for the upcoming weeks because the priority for us is to fix the Azure version and we need to finish the work uh, related to the networks and the cluster migrations. Yeah. So is there anyone against keeping it disabled for now and moving the that issue back to back to the backlog until we uh, we have finished the network and cluster migration stuff? Yeah. No, no disagreement from me. Let's disable it globally for now. Okay. And put it in the next week. Oh, yeah, we'll see. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, 
add Windows Server 2022. So Stefan uh, was able to, to configure CI Jenkins IO to have our first uh, agent template for spawning virtual uh, machine with Windows Server 2022. The goal is to allow building a new Docker image declination for that Windows Server, because as a reminder, you cannot run Docker image based on Windows Server 2022 and 2019, and you can do the other way around. So we need to maintain both at the same time until we don't need 2019. Um, so that issue is not closed, but we'll move to the backlog as soon as we will be able to answer to the contributor on the Jenkins CI Docker images. Uh, a pull request has been opened. I need to try one time that that pull request build with the new label. It's only Windows-2022, so it's an explicit label. If it works, then we can tell the user they can continue working on their pull request. And that issue will go back to the backlog. Main reason is because right now, we weren't able to find a way to install the official Windows OpenSSH on Windows 2022 on AWS, which means that our system is not able, it fails all the time. And Windows Server, uh, both version on AWS uh, take now one hour and a half to update themselves. That's a nightmare. So right now, 2019 is on Azure and AWS for us, and 2022 is only on Azure. So Stefan proposed, let's see how it, it's going, but maybe we might have to only keep Azure as a provider of Windows Server virtual machines, at least for the upcoming month, because we are wasting too much time on this build. Um, so that one I'm finishing trying with the end user and then I move it back to the backlog. Back to the back. Hello, newcomers. We have two person joining. Javanet Cash is no longer considered by the update center. I've reopened that issue, uh, which is about the Javanet 2 repository on Artifactory, which upstream is gone. There are at least two local repositories, one that I did. Uh, two days ago and one which is uh, more ancient. They are private, not visible by default, but both of these have all the artifacts. We can, we should check exhaustively, but I checked the checksum of the global repository and it looks really good. So at least if that repository is gone by accident, then we could uh, absolutely add it on our tree. So I will wait for uh, Daniel to give us his story when he's back from holidays, so January. But uh, yeah, we have at least uh, three copies and we have the old Artifactory instance migrated Sunday as a backup of backup. I wasn't able to find a way to download this artifact yet because all of these repositories are private and marked as blacked out. So you cannot see on the Artifactory front end anything. It's a no item, even though they are. So that issue is open, so we keep track of it. That's important, and I'm waiting for Daniel, so no work expected from anyone until Daniel is back. Any question? Hervé, your, your turn. So the new Kubernetes cluster private gates that aims at hosting infra.ci and release CI once everything is okay. Uh, what's the status of that new... Uh, the cluster is up and running. Uh, I've deployed uh, on it uh, yesterday uh, all um, services uh, not directly uh, for Jenkins. And today I've deployed a controller on it with uh, all infra that say that Jenkins that are your configuration except the job definition. It seems to be working, but I can't access instance. I can access, uh, I can uh, ping the machine from the, uh, um, as uh, uh, in the, on the VPN machine, and I'm logged in uh, with SSH, but uh, 
going uh, from my browser with uh, host entry on my machine. Uh, it doesn't work yet. We are working on it. And the good Which news is, is uh, I had to change the credential name uh, in my uh, factorization for having two Afra CI instances in, in our uh, in file uh, config. And he didn't break uh, the current Afra. Uh, it was the an error we, we were uh, fearing a bit. Fearing right. a bit, bit uh, more. It's nice work. Worry a bit. Nice work. So now you will have to get your hands dirty with IP tables rules. I'm sorry for you. I will try to help as much as possible, but yeah. Um, Going to a little bit. So which means as soon as we're able to fix that VPN issue and that we can reach uh, Infra CI through the new VPN, we will uh, communicate about migrating the current Infra CI to that new instance. So then we can trash the temp dash private gates uh, cluster. That's the next step, which means there might be uh, interruptions when generating the monthly weekly reports when deploying uh, Jenkins IO previsualization site, etc. So we will have to communicate on status Jenkins IO and IRC. Um, we also plan to do a full migration, full clean migration, meaning we will back up the Jenkins home and migrate it to the empty instance that Hervé created. Because last time we migrated in CI, we didn't care about the build history. We do now because there are other jobs in that instance, in that controller that, that are not infra related or not directly to our tooling. So that will be your next step, Hervé. Nice job because yeah, that was a lot of um, shadow work, especially in the network area, Terraform area, uh, Azure and, and uh, IPv4 routing. So re really cool to have that part uh, done by someone else than me. I'm really happy for that outcome, Hervé. That's a really nice job. About that, uh, that issue, recreate network to fix overlap issue. Uh, that one is open, but should go back to backlog. Or we can close it and open a, a tiny issue. The last item should be a VPN for the public network. Last step. VPN VM for the new public net. This so, will allow us to, yeah. So the, um, that's why I propose a new issue because the network part for me is finished. Even though we haven't validated the IPv6 part. So my proposal is rename the issue and create two sub issue, one to, for validating IPv6 later because we will have to do it because the huge work there is, is has been done and the VPN VM is not required for the public network because we can use the private VPN to reach through the peering to the public backends. But we will need that new scenario for a new infrastructure contributor, uh, such let for instance, Adrien La Charpentier, he need access to the public cluster for the public ill scoring application but we don't want him, by default, there is no reason for granting him access to the private area with infra CI or release CI. So the idea is to have VPN that are aimed at people that should operate or have at least a read access to services on the public network. And that one is not mandatory today because what is mandatory is administrator having access to everything and people who are currently accessing release CI for releases today should have the same access, which is the private part that we are working on. So if it's okay for you, Hervé, um, I will create the two, the two issue and I will consider the current one done because you did the scope of the issue that was creating brand new networks managed as code by Terraform for in the Azure Net repository and a new VPN. So same uh, set of features we have today. So for me, work is done. 
Is that okay for you? Did I miss the... I yes, you yeah, fine. fine. Oh. Managing issues. Um, there has been now an issue opened by Gavin about Netlify for Jenkins yeah. IO components. Uh, I need to check. He created the the initial handling. Uh, we'll have to look at it for the next iteration. Uh, I assume you need a website deployment somewhere on Netlify was his choice. Mm. Yes. You need a, a token from a GitHub app. Or... Mm -hmm. Need the bot token on. Yeah, we'll need to operate. That should be a quick one. GitHub app for plugin if scoring. Uh, that has been a request by Adrian. Um, I will postpone this one when he's back from holidays. Uh, the idea is to switch the plugin if scoring application from a GitHub token to a GitHub app. The challenge we will have to face that will be present also for Jean-Marc when collecting metrics and other scenarios like this one will be, oh, I'm not sure what is the policy for the administrator of the Jenkins CI GitHub organization. We are not admin, at least not me, not Hervé. Um, what is the policy when they install a GitHub app for managing thousands of repositories? In the case of Adrien, the GitHub app should only be able uh, to run on the plugin dash something repository. I don't see manage, a sorry. We are we are manager on, of the application on Jenkins CI, but uh, an admin has to validate the request. Okay, okay. So maybe so, it's our job to automate the. Yeah. I want to install on that set of thousand and something repository. I'm not sure why. I'm. I don't know if there are private private repository in Jenkins CI organization. That, that uh, it's not to or to uh, respond, but I yeah. would have asked on the installation on all repository. Uh, that's the what person, I will the person in charge, who will say yes and no is Vadek, the security officer. Yeah. Sure. Uh, and if I would be with Vedek, I would say, I don't care. You have to partition the access. And I know it's a pain, but that, I mean, that's too risky. If there is any private repository on Jenkins CI, if there is anything uh, that okay. should not be done, if you don't have to, you don't have okay. to access. That's not I about trust. I don't know what you why you were saying automatization automate this process because we will have to watch for new repository exactly. creation. Uh, exactly. We will need a process that say, oh, there is a new plugin uh, something. Repository permission updater could be one of the areas that could help because the goal of that reposit repository and the build associated is to list all the plugins and do stuff but with that that list. So that could be a way to automate it with the current tooling, because we are not alone having that, that kind of challenge. So if it's, if it's okay, I'll propose to postpone this one for January. Uh, postpone. We have some Jenkins mirrors uh, using wrong media type. So it was fixed uh, by OCUSL, as we said last week. And uh, we need to update the Apache configuration on archive Jenkins IO. I totally forgot about this one. That should be quite quick. Okay, uh, yes. Sorry? No, I was about to say we didn't have time to look at the yep. one. Same for the mirror start report wrong results. The goal is to check the status of the disabled mirrors. We didn't have time to check. And realign Jenkins. Uh, those, so that one was posed until the Shiffrog migration. Uh, so I need again to check if my setup is still there, if it's still buggy or if it's still eventually consistent or not. I hope it should not. And my next step is to try to build a plugin with a proxy to uh, my test area. Uh, 
that is completely an absolute, a different set than what is doing done right now. That's the worst case scenario, but I have to test to start testing somewhere. And uh, that means I will have a perfect setup to force uh, using uh, everyone on the same repository. Uh, Damien, to test uh, plugin builds with the test repos. That's all for me uh, on the work in progress. Uh, for the rest of the backlog, we didn't add new issues. Uh, planning for supported GDK, that one is on Stefan and is in holidays, so it's postponed for, for two weeks. Uh, I don't see new issues on the bottom. While I'm looking at the recent issues that could have been open, do you have other topics that should be mentioned to be worked during the upcoming two weeks? One, two, three, no, okay. Okay, so I think that's all for today. I'm gonna stop the recording. So for everyone uh, following us on recording, see you in two weeks. Uh, and for the other, just wait a minute. So bye-bye.